High-profile journalist Mary Louise Kelly, co-host of NPR's All Things Considered, always knew she wanted to be a mom. Even as a young, ambitious reporter, there were never any doubts that she couldn't do both. Fast forward to today, and she's a mom to two boys and is one of the most prominent journalists in America. But like many mothers, past and present, she battles with the continuous balancing act. Kelly will soon be an empty nester as her eldest son is in college and her youngest heads into his last year of high school this fall. Even after all these years, she still hasn't figured out how to be in two places at once. In her new memoir, It Goes So Fast, The Year of No Do-Overs, she speaks openly about her experience. I've questioned a million times how to make it work when there just aren't enough hours in the day to be the kind of journalist and do the kind of work I want to do and be the kind of mom that I want to be. When her first child, James, was born, Kelly took an unpaid six-month leave of absence from work. She still remembers one encounter when she bumped into a fellow journalist while out walking her son in his stroller. She didn't recognize me. I looked so different from the high-powered reporter that she was used to interacting with. It, it took her a moment to recognize me, and we chatted. And then she went off to the White House to do this interview that she was running late for, and I carried on to the playground with my son. And I spent the rest of that day beating myself up. How have I not figured out how to do it all? Why did I give up my career? How come she's off doing the things that I thought I was supposed to go do, you know, meaningful and important work? And it's not that being with my son isn't meaningful and important. It's that I think I didn't recognize myself when I saw what I thought she must have seen. Months later, after Kelly had returned to reporting, she happened to bump into the same journalist again. The woman told Kelly she had cried after seeing her and her son in the park. I was like, what? You know, why? Why? Like, you had it all figured out. You looked fabulous. You were off to do the big interview. And she said, because I had dropped my baby at daycare that morning and some stranger was going to be taking her to the park. And you and your son looked so happy. You were singing to him. And I spent the whole day beating myself up thinking, what am I doing with my life? And I looked at her and thought, God, sister, you and me both. You know, if we could just extend the kindness and graciousness to ourselves that we extend to others. While everything ultimately turned out okay, there were many times when Kelly and her family really struggled to get through the week. She remembers one time when she was thousands of miles overseas in Iraq and got a call from the school nurse. Her four-year-old son, Alexander, needed to go to the emergency room. And I just hit a wall and thought, I love my job. I'm good at it. I worked hard to get here, but I have a son who's really sick and I'm thousands of miles away in Baghdad and I need to come up with a career plan B. And in my case, career plan B was stepping aside from journalism and the news for uh, it was like five or six years. And I wrote two books in that time and did a bunch of freelance work, but was there when they came home from school and was there for things like the school nurse calling. And that was the right choice for my family. And I've tried, you know, all in full time and being completely at home and everything in between part-time work, four day weeks. If anybody has any tips on how to make that work, I would love to hear them because I find I would work a five or a six day week, but I had negotiated to be paid for four. So it was, <laughs> it didn't solve any of the problems. But I've tried it all and on ramped and off ramped and all the rest, trying to figure out, you know, what works for my family. Kelly emphasizes that always, whenever her job and kids collided, her children came first. I love my work. I was a journalist before I was a mom, and it's in my bones. But there are a lot of people who could cover any given story. There are a lot of great journalists out there. There's only one person on this planet who can be mom to my kids. And as I have thought about various assignments, and as I think about overseas assignments right now, I'm thinking there will always be another story. The news cycle is there. I can dip in and out. My children will not always be at home and needing me. Looking back on these key years, Kelly still judges herself and wonders if she made all the right choices. All through my years as a working mom, I was probably my own harshest critic, and that's probably true of many of us in terms of judging my choices or my inability to be in two places at once or inability to have it all and have it all at once. I was really wondering when the book came out if, you know, I would get judged for the choices I've made, which sometimes have been 
to do things I wanted to do in my career that weren't ideal for my family and sometimes have gone the other direction. On a positive note, Kelly has found it uplifting to hear from readers saying that they too have struggled to stay above water. I think a lot of people have felt reassured to see someone who's in a pretty prominent role who doesn't have it all together. <laughs> admit like there are a lot of days where I'm hanging on by my toenails <laughs> and it may look like I've figured it all out, but gosh, I haven't. And there's a certain degree of solidarity just in saying that out loud. That's quite empowering that we are every single one of us making this up as we go, trying to figure it out day by day and getting it wrong some days and getting it right some days and getting up and trying again to do it better. As a reporter, Kelly felt she needed to go straight to the source for a clearer answer. So she went to her eldest son, James, and asked him a difficult question. Was there a time when you really needed me and I didn't come because I was working? And he met my eyes and then stared at the floor at our feet for a long time, like a terrifyingly long time. <laughs> I thought, oh my God, he's about to really let me have it here. And he finally looked up and said, there probably have been, but I can't remember. And can I have 15 bucks for Chipotle? And I was about to say, you have an allowance, there's food in the fridge, all the rest. But I just thought, you know, okay, I can't be doing all that badly if that's the, you know, the reparation that is required for whatever damage I've inflicted on you uh, is you need 15 bucks for Chipotle. Kelly doesn't presume to have all the answers. With one child still at home for a little while longer, she still struggles to find the right balance between work and home. She says through it all, there have been trade-offs. I have had years and years where I couldn't have it all and all at once, but I've managed to keep my foot in the door in the newsroom and um, come in and out and on ramp at times where it was feasible with my kids. It feels like forever when you're at the beginning of this, when you have little babies, like it's just never going to end. And then it ends. And I see that because my oldest is off. And, you know, I'm lucky if he replies to a text every four days to confirm that he's alive. They still need me. They'll always need me. But my time is about to be mine again in a way that it hasn't for 20 years. And that feels both great and sad and a little terrifying. But I guess that would be my advice to say, it's okay, you don't have to do it all today. Even once the kids are raised and there's more time in the day, Kelly says that adapting to being an empty nester is difficult in its own right. It's hard. I walk past my oldest son's bedroom all the time and it's quiet, neat, clean, everything's put away. And I think, I hate this, when's he coming home? <laughs> to all the moms out there, it simply wouldn't be possible without you. Happy Mother's Day. To find out more about Mary Louise Kelly and this topic, visit viewpointsradio.org. Kelly's new memoir, It Goes So Fast, The Year of No Do-Overs, is available now online and in select bookstores. For more behind the scenes, search Viewpoints Radio on Twitter and Facebook. This segment was written and produced by Polly Hansen. Our executive producer is Amira Zaveri. Studio production by Jason Dickey. I'm Marty Peterson. Coming up next week. In most high schools in America, students have very little understanding of personal finance. It's not something that's been prioritized in American education systems. The importance of learning good money habits early on. Then. People less stressed, they get more sleep, they're enjoying their lives more, but then they bring a very productive person to work as well. The many upsides of a four day work week. But is it too good to be true? I'm Marty Peterson. And I'm Gary Price. These stories in depth on your public affairs magazine, Viewpoints. And that's Viewpoints for this week. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to learn more about upcoming shows. And find a library of past programs on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. Plus, you'll always find previous segments and more information about our guests at viewpointsradio.org. Join us again next week for another edition of Viewpoints.